Yes, guys, welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another Arsenal versus Chelsea match preview for you guys. Obviously, we had the one on AFTV the day before, but now we got Egal, Arsenal's main guy off the football terrace. Big up Terry from the football terrace as well. Egal, first off, early thoughts. How are you feeling, bro? How's your week been? Uh, yeah, my week's been good. You know what? We just lost the city bad. So I just tried to forget about that. I'm off work tomorrow for the for the whole new year. So that's good, at least. And you know what? Looking forward to Boxing Day. Not for the positive of Arsenal, but just maybe try to get some online shopping, enjoy myself there because Tier 4 is coming in Basingstoke soon. <laughs> yeah, that's coming all around England. It's like 2021 is not looking any different compared to 2020. But I am hoping it's a little bit different for us and that we go through 2021 on a much bigger high than 2020 was. And a big way is getting a bit of vengeance for August, the FA Cup final. Uh, 12 versus 10, but also Arsenal's get Arsenal's there, and I can respect that. Bamiang also did very well getting a 390k a week contract based off that result. It was his biggest W yet to date, but... What has happened since then? Because I can't lie, and this isn't me saying it to you in general. I always speak when I speak about Arsenal, it's about a fan base. The overhype after the FA Cup final, because I said this on your channel as well, and also we did a massive live on Egal's channel. So check it out if you guys haven't done it yet. The link will be in the description. And also if it works, the link will literally be on his app. So if you click that link, it'll send you straight to his channel. And check it out, because it was a great little session. We went on for an hour and it was amazing. But... Like I was saying in that one, you lot got so overhyped and it felt like the same story that I saw from 2017 when you lot dropped from second to fifth and you won the FA Cup. And the same thing happened this time. You dropped from fifth to eighth and you won the FA Cup. And there was a lot of optimism and I kind of get it. Um, I think his record compared to Emery before the cup final was better. I'm not sure how much better it was, but it was enough to call it progress and with a trophy on top. I understand that. But some of the stuff I was hearing, I mean, there was DT on AFTV and the guy was saying, as long as Solskjaer and Mourinho don't get sacked, we're going to make top four. And I was like, this much confidence? Like, I didn't even think Arteta was washed at that point. I'd had nothing bad to say about Arteta at that point. But I still thought you'd be better under Arteta, but you'd be like sixth place or something. Like, you'd be climbing, but it would still be a bit of a slow climb. But you'd be making progress. Even by my standards, I did not expect something like this. What has happened this season to Arsenal? I'm starting to pick up basketball. I'm going to go play the and watch the NBA. That's what's happened. Arsenal are making me... Not bad. <laughs> Yo, growing up, Arsenal was a team that I watched that was the, the winning team in my life. Mm. In, in this span, Arsenal have flipped and the Toronto Raptors, which were a relevant franchise my whole entire life, have recently won the NBA title. And that is the team that is now the, the winner. It's, everything's flipped. Now, what's going on at Arsenal right now is it's been years and years and years of mismanagement, poor recruitment, everything coming to a head. In addition to Arteta has had his CEO, I mean, uh, his CEO Raul sacked. He's had two two scouts sacked. He's had uh, Arsene Wenger obviously left. Gazidis left. So much people have gone that I feel like he's always been set up for failure. And recently, he's been given the job as head manager instead of coach. He first came in as a coach. He was doing well as a coach. The moment he went and took that job as manager, maybe he's taking too much on right now. Maybe he just needs to focus on what's on the pitch because he can't really be focusing on what's off the pitch because what's on the pitch is not going well. And the main issue for me is there's just too many players who let him down week in, week out. And he's still picking them. But to me, he doesn't have other choices. Some of these guys, he might just need to get rid of them and play the kids. And it comes down to poor recruitment, players not playing well, and mismanagement from Arteta. But I would give most of the blame to the players, Carefree. You know me my, and my stance with Arteta. You think I'm it's still the players. Yeah, 100%. Okay, I, I fully agree with you that it isn't 100% Mikel Arteta's fault. I do also think, like, again, we also said this on your video, but the reason why I think. It, he is completely the wrong player for the wrong manager for the job is because of his lack of experience and that combined with the state that your club is in right now literally top to bottom like you said from the players to the manager to the board to the owner itself it is all a massive mess and you have a manager who has had less experience than frank lampard going into this lampard had one year experience coming into the chelsea job arteta had none 
and you have him managing a club in this sort of state and the uh, the job is on him to fix it as his first job with a club as big as Arsenal. Like, let's be real. As good as you might think Arteta is, and you might still be allowed to think that, I mean, with recent form, maybe not, but like, you might still be allowed to think it because it's not completely his fault. Can I say something? There's a lot for it to turn around. There is. We've been very unlucky on one sense. Don't laugh at me when I say this, but if you look at the XG and you look at the actual games that we played, some people might be like, I'm a stat, I'm stat padding or I'm looking at stats mm. too much, but against Everton, we had better chances. Eddie and Ketia literally had a huge chance, plus a penalty. If you look at the XG at the end of the game, we should have, we should have, we should have at least got a draw out of that game. Their two goals were kind of fluky in the sense you get a, you get a header from Mina off a set piece and you get the ball literally bounces that was off target off our defender's shoulder own goal against Everton, then you got the I Southampton game. a fluky win. It was a penalty that beat them against us too, so it is what it is. And then in, in, in hindsight, Spurs, we, they scored two goals against us. You know what their XG was? Their XG was, I think it was a, a goal no, and a half. The Spurs game, I, you fell right into Jose's hand. Like everyone in their nan knows Jose Mourinho will sit deep and hit you on the counter and you just overcommitted bodies. I was like, Really? Have you never watched a Jose match in your life of playing football like this against Spurs? Are you crazy? Like, I, yeah, you are right. The XG does speak, but there, XG always needs to be given with a bit of the eye test. Like, I understand what you're saying, and you what, for the Everton game, you make a very fair point. But also the eye test has to come in, which is why the Spurs game, I can't really allow that. Really? I think they completely played into his hand. Really? And also, injured party being put, thrown onto the pitch. Like... What is this with Mikel Arteta and not understanding injuries? Like, this is the third time now. David Luiz, party. You had Martinelli on the Man City game as well. That is one thing where I will say that is his fault. He needs to start taking care of his players better. Look, I'm not going to hide. He does deserve criticism for that. And I'm, I'm going to give him criticism for that. He has made mistakes man managing those some of the players and some of their injuries and how they're coming back. But at the same time, this has been happening under Una Emery. This has been happening under Arsene Wenger. We are historically known for having a bad medical record at Arsenal. Our, for some reason, players that we need always go down. Or is it that we just don't have enough good players that we always need the players that get injured? Which one is it? Because honestly, we're always in it. We're, I feel like... More than Chelsea, we're always one injury away from a crisis. Yes, uh, def I'd say definitely to a bigger extent than us. But yes, but depends on the player. Like if you lose Leno, you lot are going down. Like we'll even take we'll take the banter away from it. You lot are going Runnison down. That's garbage. just like Ronison is genuinely. Ca is it true that he he started his career as a centre mid, or something like that? He wasn't. He wasn't the before we got him. He was the backup for Dijon. Wait, what? What? Yeah, I, like, I'm not gonna mock too much. We spent seventy two million on Kepper. I'm not gonna say too much, but same way, what? He lost his job because he was too short to be goalkeeper in France. They felt like he wasn't physical enough. Oh no, another goalkeeper that is too short. Uh, where have I heard this story before? Oh Espino? dear, how tall is he, by the way? I think he's six foot. Raw, he's smaller than Kepper. Raw, okay, cool. He's smaller than Kepper and Willy Caballero. Yeah, like, as Chelsea fans, we all understand the struggle with small goalkeepers. You need to wrap burnt Leno in cotton wool for the rest of the season because if you lose him, you lot are finished. You lot are we so went, finished. We lost our best keeper last year, bro. In March yeah, March. yeah, I mean, I always used to push a Kepper-Leno agenda. I'm not going to push that one too far anymore because Kepa really killed that agenda last season. But Martinez looked class. Even in the cup final, he really did look class. The last few games of the season, I can understand why Leno was given the nod over him experience and he was the more regular number one anyway. It did make sense. Maya looked like the wrong decision though. I don't really blame Arteta too much on that because Leno was a class goalkeeper. I mean, if anything, it's probably all the defensive mistakes that make him look too bad if I take all the bias out of things. But he is a class goalkeeper. I don't really know what's happened to him this season. Maybe it's that injury from Morpai. I feel like he might still be recovering from that. And if he is, fine. Like, it's the same thing with Kai Hamlet. He will run, run right now. But he'll come back and become good anyway. So, yeah, you ain't got nothing to worry about the goalkeeping side of things. 
if we're moving swiftly on from Lampard, because I do want to talk about Frank Lampard as well. Another thing we were getting was a lot of Lampard slander throughout the summer as well. And early on towards the start of the season. Again, we're not saying this is you in general, but I have parts of the fan. Oh, well, then this is completely directed at you. There was a lot of Lampard slander at the start of the season, even though the loss to Liverpool has massive cap attacks on it. And there was a couple bottle jobs as well where we came back against West Brom. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it's a draw. And I'm, Southampton is huge cap attacks as well. If you see them second and third goals, absolute embarrassment. But Lampard has also answered a lot of his questions. We said the 4 2 3 1 wasn't working, and we switched to a 4 3 3. He's got the players that he's wanted. And yeah, we have had a bit of a blip of a week against Everton and Wolves. But on the grand scheme of things, we look very stable. I think it's four defeats in all competitions, three defeats in 90 minutes in all competitions. We look low-key very strong. And the one thing I like is that we have depth. We have depth all over the pitch. The only place I'd be worried about is in goal as well. Other than that, I could back potentially anybody being put back into a squad. What are your thoughts on Frank Lampard this season? And do you think he has done well to silence a lot of the critics? Or do you think there is still a long way to go with him? Okay, I have two agendas that I'll get out of the way. One, I feel like the Mason Mount thing, he is he goes as good as Mason Mount is on form. Because if Mason Mount is gonna pick get picked every week, week in, week out, not gonna get dropped, even if even if he's performing terrible, you're you're only as good as your players on on the pitch. And if Mason Mount is gonna be picked every single week and do bad performances, Frank Lampard should have been criticized early when Mason well, Mount was playing terrible. I get that, he's, be playing also him. Been, he's also been potentially our best number eight since we switched to four three three. He's definitely yeah. been our most consistent. Hey, that's why I say your form changed with him and obviously the goalkeeper coming in and Thiago Silva coming in. Mm. But where I was criticizing Lampard is if you have spent that much money, you have to be guaranteed title contenders with the amount of money you guys spent. Finishing fourth the year before, spending that much money, you should be guaranteed title contenders. And I feel like if you had Ancelotti, Klopp, Joel, uh, even any of these other guys, top managers in the, in the league, you would be up there. And we. And I maybe should apologize for saying if you had Arteta, you'd still win the league with Arteta because I don't have no evidence to say what I was saying back then because right now I look like a fool for saying Arteta over Lampard. But at the same time, Arteta, Lampard, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, all these guys, the difference in each team is the level of investment spent. The level of investment spent at Chelsea, the level of investment spent at Manchester United is up here in comparison to the level of investment spent at Arsenal. Yes, we spent money on players, but you guys spent a lot more and a lot more quality. Isn't your net spend worse than us over the last three years, though? Net spend, that is true. But the thing about it is, you guys actually have good sales. You sold Eden Hazard for how much? You sold Marata for how much? You sold your old goalkeeper, Courtois, for how much? If you sold Conte tomorrow, you'd get more money than any player on our team. Yeah, yeah. That is a very fair point. Yeah, that's Marina tax is beautiful. That's one tax I will take. When you look at net spend, one thing Chelsea do, they are probably, I've actually looked at this. That's why I say when people bring net spend to the Arsenal conversation against other teams, it's irrelevant because we can't sell a player if our life depended on it. You guys sell players. So our net spend always will look worse because we can't sell anybody. It, we yeah, want to get rid of people. That makes sense. We can't sense. get rid of them for free. Cool. That that does make sense. Yeah, you lot have a lot of players that you need to try and get rid of. And that's half the reason why this rebuild process is going to take so long. Like, I I don't know. Would you say he's lost the dressing room? Or do you think he's losing parts of it? There is... Okay, I'm going to tell you something. There is a divide in the camp. There's two sides of the camp. There's a side of the camp that train with Ozo and and um, Socrates every single week and see these guys in the training camp and see them training with them in, the, in London Coney, sit with them, eat with them. And when they go on the pitch, they're like, how are they leaving my guys behind? And they're kind of frustrated and pissed off about that. So they blame that on the manager. Then there's also the other camp that are saying these guys, their attitude is terrible because of this whole situation. So there's a divide in the camp right away from the Ozo and Socrates in the whole situation. On top of that, there's too many people on in the team we have a situation like Southampton where they have a big, they have a Europa League squad when they're not in the Europa League. We now have a Champions League squad 
when we're when we're fighting relegation almost, mm. which I don't believe anyways. But that's what we're, position we're in. Okay, this this just continues to build to my belief that Arteta is really fighting a losing battle, and maybe it's not to say anything about the guy's quality as a manager, but I, 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 he could be a good manager if he took a step back. Like, I'll be real, this is a massive step forward for him. And I think a big thing for why there's a lot of support behind him is because a lot of stock has been put down on this guy already. People invested heavily in Arteta stocks, also to compete with the Lampard and Ole stocks. Like We've all been flexing our managers and saying, hey, Lampard's better than your two, Ole's better than your two, Arteta's better than your two. I, you lot have to take the L on this one. And it's not even to say it in a mockery way. I'm saying it is a way you lot need to rebuild. You lot need to just cut your losses with, with this one. It hasn't worked out. You lot, even if it is just a new manager bounce, for the sake of not potentially getting relegated from the Premier League, you might as well just have to take the L on this one. I already said, again, back on your video as well, check it out. Maurizio Sarri, he'd be the perfect addition for you lot as a manager. I never want to see it happen, but he would fix you lot up within two, three years flat. If you lot are talking to me about project or trust the process, that is Sarri Ball incarnate. And I think he'd be perfect for you guys, although I hope it never happens. I'm going to say something. I've heard a lot of Arsenal fans say, I'm, I don't believe this, but they're saying certain fans, I would say like 30, uh, I would say like 30 percent of the fan base want to get relegated just so the owner gets uh, sells the team. And then the other 70 percent are saying, you're crazy. We're never getting relegated. We're not going to get relegated. There's people who are saying you're, you're crazy to even want us to get relegated like me. I'm telling those people, if you really want the owner gone, we all need to unite. We have a situation right now, Lewis. They're running Arsenal like we're we're Celtic, we're we're the Rangers before they got liquidated. That's how bad we are. We're being run like like Rangers before they got liquidated, and all the stuff's going down. We're not losing money, but we are losing we are losing a lot of money financially because of the clout of the club is being destroyed. Players don't want to come to us. Yes, we. I heard I heard um, what's his name for Viti Romano say people still respect Arsenal people still want to come to Arsenal people still want to players still want to play for Arsenal but realistically it's it's in name only that's the problem we're like Schalke we're falling we're a falling giant it's it's mm. disgusting yep and but again that's all the more reason why you do need that new manager bounce and you need experience behind the wheel and that is something that Mikel Arteta just simply doesn't give you uh, just to round things off, uh, score prediction. What are your thoughts? After all that, I would be delusional to pick a win. But I, I don't feel like it's going to be the four or five nils that everyone's predicting. I feel like realistically it's going to be a close game. You guys are going to score first. We're going to get a goal. And then it's going to be a shaky, shaky last 20, 30 minutes of the game. And it's going to end up a draw, in my opinion. Because at the Emirates, even against the big teams, we always show up to a certain level. We never just bend over and let everybody take us. But even with all the injuries that you guys might have going into the game, I think we only have three like recorded injuries and one one suspension one. for a red card. Who's Gabriel. the player out? It's still Gabriel out. It's uh, Bamiang. Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel is questionable. Martinelli, that is. And, uh, I feel like he could oh, play though. Martinelli. And then Gabriel, the centre back, he should be fine for this game. Okay. Because he did play against Man City, so he should be fine for this game. And then there's not really too many things. I just hope Granit Xhaka doesn't play. <laughs> I pray to God Granit Xhaka doesn't play. Oh, could he be back? Yeah, he could be back. Nice. I'll time. tell you this, that man. Music to my ears. I still back Arteta. And you think I'm crazy. I know. But the only reason why I do it is because I genuinely believe there is bigger issues. And I feel like he's addressed it. And if we can get rid of the 700 million, uh, the 700 million of wages that's leaving in the summer, uh, seven. That's. I mean, seven hundred k worth of a week of wages in the summer. Seven hundred k worth week of wages in the summer. Just Mezzo Ozo and like four other contracts expired. You could bring in quality players for that money. Let's be honest. Chelsea's done it in one window. Seven players. Why can't How we? How much is Kroenke taken out of that first? Kroenke spent money. You just said it. Our, our net spend's been bad. Uh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. Okay, fair play, fair play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause... Yeah, now I hear that that other new stadium is getting built as well. Yeah, so if you do get rid of those signs, that could be a couple more players. So what, you would ride out this season and then try and see if you could get a few more signings. Actually, if you lot had no European competition, plus a couple signings, 
It's crazy. How the hell are you even making me think of this? What the hell? Listen, Lewis. I, I hear what you're saying. You, you won the league. I like that. I hear what you you're the saying. League. You won the league. You're in 10th. Well, Tottenham. You, said you were going to win the league. I was no, like, you won the league with, with Chelsea the year after you went 10th. Spurs yeah. last year the at this European point. European competition was a big reason for that. So Spurs sacked uh, Mauricio Pochettino, brought in Jose in the 14th position. The next year now, uh, the, people were saying title contenders for two weeks. <laughs> and then and then you also have who else was down there? Manchester United. They were they were twelfth and finished third. So it right, is what? realistic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What you think you guys could still wait? No, I'm, no, no. You're thinking next season. You're thinking next season. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm okay, not, I'm, okay. I'm not I mean, saying this season. <laughs> without any European competition, I'd still say with a new manager, but let's just say for the sake of it, if Arteta was still there. And you get a signing or two, I'd be vindicated. Maybe. I mean, if this is the big Egal redemption arc we're talking about, it was called out on this channel first. So I'm proud to say that. Also, I will not be proud to say that if that does happen and Arsenal start balling out next season. But <laughs> you'd be happy for me, though. Visit this video because that is a very interesting point. But that's also a big if, if Mikel Arteta is even still in the job next season, which is a lot of speculation. There are a lot of games, which is going to be very long for you guys, hopefully very entertaining for us, but we'll have to wait and see. But we just have to wait and see for the next one, which is Arsenal or Chelsea. But Igal, thanks for jumping on. It's been a great discussion for you, for everyone involved. I hope you all have enjoyed it. If you have, let us know down in the comment section below. Hit the like and subscribe button. Check out Igal's channel as well. There will be a link in the description below. And if you press the title, it will just send you straight to his channel. So check his channel out. Check out the live we did on his channel as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very soon. Have a Merry Christmas. Take care and up the chill.